Hello and welcome to the 2016-2017 FCCLA Portal Affiliation Instructional Video. We'll be walking you through the different steps of the affiliation process today and hope that you find it helpful when you are getting your members signed up for FCCLA. So the first step is to log in to the FCCLA Portal. You can do that at that web address you see on the screen. Today I'll be using a test system that we use at National FCCLA. So that's why you see QA FCCLA portal there on the screen. It looks exactly like what you will see in the FCCLA portal, but it just allows us to do some testing and use data in a different way. To log into the FCCLA portal, you will need your username, which is your chapter ID. If you don't know your chapter ID number, you can contact your state advisor for that information and then you will need your password. And this information is set by the primary chapter advisor in the chapter. If you don't know the password, you can use the forgot password button on that landing page, or you can also contact your state advisor to reset your password. So once you log in to the FCCLA portal this year, the first thing you will need to do is the graduation process and the confirmation screen. So we're going to start with graduating 12th grade students. And the first thing you'll need to do is to confirm this information on this screen. And that will be your chapter membership type, the original chapter ID for your chapter, if you know it, and then the student password. And this is similar to last year with the student password. We're using it in the future, so it's been automatically set to FCCLA. Any information that you put into this screen last year should stay there for this year and you should just be verifying that it's still correct. A new thing that we are asking for this year is the principal's information. We're collecting this data so that if we have amazing things going on at FCCLA chapters, we can keep principals informed about that and can continue to have good communication with those individuals in the schools. So we're just asking for the principal's first name, last name, and an email address. And then you'll just select those graduation pre preferences. So if you're graduating 12th grade students and the highest grade level for FCCLA members in your chapter is 12th grade, that's what you will select there. And then the only real option for how you're going to treat your graduating members if you're doing 12th graders is making them eligible for alumni and associates. Now this does not mean that you are making them members of alumni and associates, it just means that you are saying they're eligible to join alumni and associates at this point. So once you've confirmed that information, you'll click on the black confirm button and then this white screen will pop up. It's just going to ask you to read through this information about the graduation process. So please do that before you continue for future instructions. And then you can just close that screen. So once you've closed that screen and you've moved on, you will see this information, which should look similar to last year to you. This means you've logged into your chapter. And you should see on the left hand side of your screen a red graduate button. So that's where we want to start is to click on that button. We want to encourage you if you see any red boxes or red information within the affiliation process, that means that you need to take action. So the first thing that you need to do is to look at that red graduate button and click on that to be able to move forward. So the first thing that you'll want to do once you get to this graduation process is to verify the advancing grade. Again, if this is 12th graders that you're graduating, that would be post-secondary because that is the next grade level that a 12th grader could advance to in FCCLA. The graduating school will be moved to alumni unless these students are continuing their FCCLA journey at another post-secondary institution. If they are continuing the journey, you can click on that black select button and you can choose the school that they will be attending and will be joining FCCLA. The only new thing on this screen this year is the post-graduation email, and that is for you to enter the personal email address of a student for post-graduation. And that's if you put in a school email address or even your own personal email address and you know that post-graduation email, that will just allow us to better track our former FCCLA members, but it's not required for you to update that information. 
So after you've verified all the information on this screen, then you can either use the black select all button or you can individually select students to graduate from your chapter. Again, this should be students who are 12th graders in the 2015-2016 school year. So once you have those students selected, you'll click on the black graduation completed button in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. From there, it's just going to ask you to confirm that you are finished with the graduation process. If you are, you will click yes. If you need to look over some more information or gather some more information before you graduate students, you would click no in this instance. So now we're going to go through graduating middle school and junior high students from your chapter. Very similarly to graduating 12th grade students, you're just going to confirm this information on the screen. So you're just going to confirm your chapter membership type, the original chapter ID, and the student password. Again, student password is automatically set to FCCLA, and we will be using that in the future in the system. We are collecting the principal information this year, just like if we are graduating 12th grade students. So if you will just enter the principal's first name, last name, and email address. Again, that's just so that we can be in contact with our school administrators about the amazing things our FCCLA chapters are doing. If you are a teacher of a middle school or junior high, you will then select the highest grade level that FCCLA is offered at your school. In this case, we've just selected eighth grade, but yours might be sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. It just depends on your middle school and your junior high. You have two options then for how to treat your graduating members. You can move them on to the same chapter. And in this case, that would mean if I have students at Lincoln Junior High and they are all going to be moving on to Lincoln High School, I would select move on to the same chapter. If I have students at Lincoln Junior High that are going to Washington High School, Jefferson High School, Adams High School, Lincoln High School, then you would select the move on to various chapters. We know with junior high and middle school students, you may not know exactly where all of your students are attending, but we just ask that you complete this information to the best of your ability. When you select move on to the same chapter or move on to various chapters, it will give you options of cities and schools for you to move these students to. If you already entered this information for us last year, it's gonna appear on the screen already and you won't have to select a city or a school to graduate those students. So once you complete this information, you'll just click on the black confirm button and then you will move in just like the high school. So you'll read the graduation information on the first pop-up that appears. Once you've read that information, click close. And then just like with high school, you'll look for those red buttons and the first red button you see is graduate. So we're gonna click on the red graduate button. So for middle school and junior high students, you're going to check the advancing grade. So if you have seventh grade as the highest grade level, this advancing grade should say eighth. So that this should be the grade they're entering for the 2016-2017 school year. So because we have this chapter set as the highest grade level is eighth grade, then that advancing grade is going to be ninth grade. The graduating school is the school the student will be attending to continue his or her education. So this should appear based on your graduation preferences. If that information is incorrect and you need to change it, you can click on the black select button under the change destination column and select the school that that student will be attending. So you'll wanna just verify the rest of the information on this screen and then once it's all correct, and these are the students who you're graduating out of your chapter from the 2015-2016 school year, You'll click on the black select all button or you can individually select those students to graduate and once you're finished with that you'll click on the black graduation completed button so again it's just going to ask you to verify that you are finished with graduation so you will either say yes or no and then that is the end of the graduation process so once you finish that the next thing you'll want to do is the bulk editing student process so you should see now, once you finish graduation, there's another red button there to be completed, and that says Edit Chapter Members. So you will not be able to edit anything about your students until you have done this Edit Chapter Members function. So you just wanna keep that in mind as you're working through this process. 
So the bulk edit process is just a one-time opportunity for you to edit the basic information of students on one screen. And then once that process is completed, um, then you'll be able to edit any other information about students. So click on that red Edit Chapter Members button. And this shows you a screen of all of the things that you will be able to edit for those students. So you can update the grade, the individual affiliation type, the member title, the email address, and the cell phone. This is also where you can drop students who will not be affiliating in the 2016-2017 school year. So you can just click on that black drop button. It's going to ask you to confirm that you do want to drop students and then they will no longer be listed on your chapter roster. Another cool function that you can do here is you can bulk roll forward the grade of your students. So as you can see here, it's 9th, 10th, 10th, 10th. If you click on that black bulk grade roll forward button, it's going to change that to 10th, 11th, 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 and all the way down will change that quickly for you so that you don't have to go individually and update the grades of all of your students in your chapter. So again, this is a quick way for you to edit the basic information about your students. Once you've finished this process, you'll be able to edit the other specific information about students. So just verify that this information is correct. Drop any students that are not affiliating in the 2016-2017 school year. And then once you're finished with this, you'll click on that black bulk edit complete button down in the bottom left hand corner. So again, this screen is just going to show you how that drop down works. You can either individually select that grade level increase or you can do the bulk grade roll forward, but there is a drop down for the individual affiliation type and the member title. So again, once you finish all this information, you'll click on the bulk edit complete button to move forward. It's just going to have a quick pop-up that says, are you finished with this? If you are finished, you'll say yes. If you need some more information and you want to come back to the screen and be able to do this bulk edit, you'll say no, and then that Edit Chapter Members button will still be available to you. So once you've finished bulk editing your students, now is the time to add new chapter members or to submit your affiliation. So this is what your screen should look like at that point. It should now have a red Submit Affiliation button, and then you can also add chapter members. So we are going to go through the Add Chapter Members process at this point. This is going to look a little bit different in the system this year. We're giving you two different options for how you can add chapter members. You can do an individual member entry, or you can do that bulk member CSV entry like we've had available in the past. So we're going to just walk through both of those processes really quickly for you to offer some assistance. So adding chapter members individually, this is the new part of adding chapter members this year. You can see it's a little bit more user friendly for just at entering the information of individual students. So once you click on that individual member entry tab, this screen will pop up with boxes to submit the information of students. Any boxes outlined in red are required fields and they must be completed. So once you've completed all the required fields and you're ready to go and finish this student, you can either click save and add next member if you want to add another member to the chapter roster, or you can click save and finish if you're finished adding members. The other option for adding chapter members is the same as it has been in the past. You can download the CSV template that you see on your screen there and complete all those required fields. Once that CSV template is completed, you would highlight all the student information. Use your keyboard to use Control C to copy the material and then you would come and just place your cursor in this prefix box. You don't click in it, you just place your cursor in that box and then you click Control V to paste that information. I know some of you have used this and have had great success with this. We would just continue to ask you to use that, especially if you have a large number of students to upload into our system. We do ask that you save often every five to 10 members if possible. Um, depending on the internet speed at your school, sometimes larger amounts of students being imported in doesn't work as well. 
That export data button that you see there on your screen is just going to extract any information you have entered onto the screen and then download it to your computer. That is just if you've been working on some data here and you find out you don't have some of that required information, you can export that that you've already entered so that you don't lose that data. Once you've completed all the required fields for your students, you'll click on that save button and that will save the data for those students. So the last thing is just submitting students. And at this point, again, you're looking for those red buttons that require your attention. So you'll see submit affiliation is ready to go. So you can either use that select all button that you see on your screen to select every student on your roster, or you can individually select students you would like to be added to different invoices. Please keep in mind that you wanna check this roster at this point and make sure you don't have duplicates or students that you didn't intend to affiliate. So once you know who you're affiliating, you've selected those students, at that point, you'll click on the Submit Affiliation button to submit them for affiliation. So this year, this confirmation box looks a little bit different that pops up. So it's going to give you this information that once a chapter member has been submitted for affiliation, the member cannot be deleted and just asks you to check the balance below. So this screen this year is going to give you the price and the quantity of how many students and advisors that you're submitting for affiliation. So we just ask that you verify this information very closely, make sure the quantity matches your expectations and the amount matches your expectation. If it does not, you'll wanna contact either your state advisor or the national office to make sure you understand how to affiliate correctly. You can use the export button to download a file that basically looks exactly like this chart, that might be helpful for you to submit for a PO, but also just to keep for your files. So when you hit that export button, it just downloads as a PDF to your screen or to your computer, basically what you see on your screen here. Once you know all this information is correct, you would hit confirm. If you need to correct things, you would hit close so that you can go and change how many students you're affiliating, how many advisors you're affiliating, or the amount of your state dues or your national dues. If everything looks correct on the screen, you'll click on that black confirm button. So now it's going to bring up a pop-up that asks you what do you want to do to view your invoices. So you can select to view your invoice, which is going to take you directly to look at your invoice. You can select to pay your invoice, which will take you to the pay invoices screen or you can choose to pay invoices later, and then that will just allow you to have that opportunity later on to pay those invoices. We're hoping this will help you better find where your invoices are in the system and be able to see those quickly after you affiliate. To view your invoice at any point in time, they will always be located under the Invoice History tab. So here's where all of your invoices for the 2016-2017 school year will be listed. If you need to view any past invoices from previous years in this system, you can use that historical invoices black button that you see there. If you want to view and download your invoice, you can use the eye icon that you see on your screen. And then when you're ready to pay your invoice, again, look for those red buttons that are asking you to complete information. So you'll click on that red pay invoices button. So the last thing, nothing has changed about the parental consent form for students under the age of 13 this year. If you enter any date of birth and it appears that a student is under the age of 13, it's just gonna ask you to collect a consent form these consent forms can be found on the national website under the membership tab and then the parental consent form tab. So in order to submit students who do require that consent form, you'll want to click on the red confirm consent forms button. Again, red means you need to take action. And then you'll just have to select which students you have those consent forms from. If you have collected them from every student, you'll click on that black select all button. If you're just going to individually select students, you would use those boxes under that select all column to just individually select those students. You do not have to upload the consent forms into the system. 
But we do ask that you collect them and you store them with your chapter information. So by clicking on the screen, you're just verifying that you have those forms in your possession as the chapter advisor. So once you have clicked off on students you have those forms collected from, you'll just click on the Save button to verify that you have that information and you're finished with this process. So that's the end of the tutorial for the affiliation system this year. We also have step-by-step -step instructions listed on our national website under the Membership tab and then the Join FCCLA tab. And we do encourage you to review this video again as many times as you need to and also review those step-by-step -step instructions to make sure that you are following along as best as possible with the way the process works. If you have any questions about affiliations, please feel free to email us at membership at fcclainc.org or you can call our office at 703-476-4900. We hope this was helpful to you today and look forward to a great affiliation year with you all.